The impossible is possible and it's happening today. And start to ask, where are the limits in my life? And can I take those limits off? Can I take those chains off? And really consider, what do you want your reality to look like? So in this video, I want to talk about doing the impossible. You see, I used to think that a lot of things were impossible, and I started to change my worldview on that. I started to look at the world in a different way. I used to think that there were only certain levels or limits that I was ever going to accomplish in life. I thought I was bound by the lifestyle I was born into, the amount of money I make, the beliefs I make, my family's beliefs, the, the my societal beliefs, and, and I believe that was how I was going to live my whole life. And I wanted to break that paradigm because as I learned more and more, as I went to hypnosis school, learned more about the mind, I began to say to myself, what is really possible? To really explore this idea, I began to look at people doing the impossible. And I think this is one of the best ways to change your mind. You see, we accept so much as normal today, stuff that at one time was impossible. And I began to look there. The first thing I started to look at was, for example, airplanes. I mean, look at an airplane in the sky. It's a pretty amazing feat. And if you go back a few hundred years ago, that would have seemed impossible. It would have seemed like witchcraft. Imagine telling somebody back in the 1800s or 1700s, there's gonna be a giant metal object in the air carrying up to three, 400 people, weighing who knows how much, and it's just gonna fly through the air at 400 miles per hour. They didn't even have a concept of what 400 miles per hour could be and tell them that, that was gonna exist at one point. They would have told you you were crazy. They might have even locked you up in an in a insane asylum or something, but yet it exists today. I fly all over the world all the time. I'm in them all the time. And, uh, and as crazy as it, as it sounds, if you were back in those days, they do exist and they're perfectly normal today. And what's something else like that if we look at? How about television? That's a great example. How about the telephone itself? How about, for example, a cell phone? I mean, it used to be that the flip phone was just Star Trek. People would flip a phone open and make a noise and we thought that was cool. But today we have stuff that's way beyond the Star Trek flip phone. I mean, we can, we, can, uh, we have the internet on our phone. We can call people. We can, if we lose a phone, I got find my device. I did that the other day where I was able to look up on the internet where my phone was sitting after I lost it. And literally through uh, a satellite technology, I'm able to figure out where I left my phone. This is amazing stuff when you think about it. But I asked myself, how far does this go? Where is the limit? What is the limit? Because I wanted to challenge my brain. Now, if we go back a little bit to the plane analogy, this one's really interesting because when the Wright brothers were figuring out how to fly, they were basically using bicycle parts. They were bicycle builders with bicycle parts. They were not world famous scientists that understood aviation or anything like that. Matter of fact, a lot of scientists at the time said that flight was utterly impossible for humans. It couldn't be done. So they weren't even researching it. But there were some people that really wanted to figure it out. So there was a man, and if I remember his name correctly, it was Pierpont Langley that was given all the funding to try to figure out flight. He really wanted to figure out flight, and so did the Wright brothers. But at the same time, the Wright brothers wanted to do it out of passion, out of love, out of appreciation for the idea, because they weren't getting paid to do it. They didn't have all this funding. They weren't doing it for notoriety because they were doing it with bicycle parts in their spare time after work. And guess what? They figured it out first. Pierpont Langley, he went in and he basically, after they figured it out, he gave up, he moved on. He could have built on their idea, but he didn't. The Wright brothers figured it out. Now, after they figured it out, there were German scientists at the time saying that yeah. it didn't happen. They just didn't believe it because they had already decided that it was impossible. And they're being told somebody has done this, literally, and they're saying, no, they didn't. No, they've done this, no, they didn't. How often does this go on today? This is a very common thing. So how far does this go? How limiting are your beliefs? Where, where do you limit your beliefs? The more I've taken the uh, handcuffs off of me and my beliefs and said, maybe this is possible and maybe that is possible, the more successful I've become in life, the more money I've made, the more I've done what seems impossible. I mean, now I travel the world. I, I, I snowboard in the summer. I go to Japan to snowboard. There's like, there was a time when I looked at Japan and I said, I want to snowboard in Japan because they've got amazing snowboarding. And it just seemed utterly impossible to me. Now it's like, if I want to go snowboard in Japan, I snowboard in Japan. There was a time when 
I wanted to live in LA in this big, huge loft that, that I had found, and I thought it was impossible. And now it's like normal to me. I live in that big, fancy loft by the beach, and it's, it's, it's utterly normal to me, where in the past, even having the tiniest apartment seemed out of, in, in LA by myself, seemed out of uh, possibility for me. Now let's take this a step further. How did I start to believe that my beliefs were unlimited or that possibility was unlimited? I started looking at people that were literally doing the impossible, stuff that today we still can't explain. Uh, there's a great TV show called Stanley Superhuman, and I started watching a lot of episodes of that, and that's where the idea kind of was birthed. And in Stanley Superhuman, they look at people that are uh, are doing crazy stuff that really, it's really hard to explain. One of them was a guy named Dean Carnassus. Dean Carnassus is a man who figured out that he can run forever. He doesn't wear out running. To prove it, he ran 50 marathons in 50 days. And, and he just, he every day, he'd get up and run another full marathon. Now, that would destroy the average human being, but it wasn't destroying him. And, uh, and he said he figured this out. It was one, one of his birthdays, I believe. He went out running one day uh, on his birthday and he basically just didn't want to stop running. And he's been kind of running ever since. And on my 30th birthday, I was drinking, I had tequila. And I said, is this where I want my life to go? I married, uh, I'd be fat businessman with uh, affairs when I get older. I said, no, I don't want. And so I left the bar and I said, I'm gonna run 30 miles tonight. 30 miles without yes. uh, training, without nothing? 50 kilometers. No, no training, just to celebrate my 30th birthday and, and take my life back. And now I'm so much happier. And so the, in Stanley Superhuman, they followed him one day with a camera in a car and watched him run from dusk till dawn, or dawn till dusk. Like it was an insane amount of miles. I can't remember how many it was. It was maybe 30 some miles. And then he turned around and ran back after it got dark. And he had a backpack on, he had food, he had water, that kind of stuff. But he said his body doesn't tear down. So the next thing they did on the show was they hooked him up to uh, some machines to see what his body was doing. They were curious. And they discovered that his body was eating the lactic acid as fast as he created it. It was using it for fuel to fuel the body for running. Now, if you understand how lactic acid works, lactic acid is what's tearing down the muscle and making it so that you, the average guy, like you and me, can't run. But in his case, he never got the buildup of, of lactic acid. So what the scientists in that, that studied him in this, uh, in this video determined was that he had an ability that future humans would probably get, and he was the first one to get it. And that's all they really said. He's an outlier. What do they do? They, well, this guy's got some ability. We're, we're just gonna move on and study the people that are more in the normal range. They don't really know what to do with these outliers. And, and, and a lot of times they don't study them enough. So we move on and, and this idea that he's the first guy to get an ability is really interesting because a short time later, this guy, the Iron Cowboy shows up. His last name is Lawrence. And the Iron Cowboy runs 50 triathlons 50 days in a row to, to prove that his body doesn't wear out. So now we've got two people doing this. Now it's starting to seem more normal rather than impossible. But it sounds utterly impossible and you can look these guys up on the internet. We can go all the way back to Roger Bannister who broke the four minute mile. Before he broke the four minute mile, scientists, doctors were, con were uh, confident that you would seriously do damage to your body if somebody ran faster than four minutes in a mile. So nobody did it, nobody could do it. And then when he finally did it, Roger Bannister was the first, I think it was in 59, um, then something like three or four more people right after him did it too because the belief was there. Once the belief is there, it's pretty amazing what we can do. So what are the limits? How much farther can we take this? If you look at Stanley Superhuman, the limits are pretty insane. They go farther and farther and farther. I'm gonna give you one more person. There's a bunch more, but I'll give you one more. There's a guy on Stanley Superhuman that they call Electro Man. And he doesn't, uh, he doesn't have, he can run 30 times the, the amount of electricity through his body that would kill a normal human. They hook up wires up to his body and they basically run electricity through him and he'll fry an egg through a pan. He'll light a light bulb. How he discovered this ability is kind of interesting. He was actually severely depressed and he wanted to kill himself. And he tried to hang from some power lines in India to kill himself and he didn't die. He actually stayed alive. He said the only thing that happened was he would lose his vision while the electricity is going through the power lines. And then when he lets go, his vision would come back. And uh, that's how he discovered he had, the, he had the ability. Kind of a, a sad way to discover it, but he discovered it all the same. 
there's more people like this in there. The more you start to do research on the impossible, people doing the impossible, the more you believe the impossible is possible. Untie your mind, remove the limits, start to ask what is possible. I mean, in quantum physics, we're, we're, we're exploring so much crazy stuff that who knows, maybe someday we'll be teleporting. Um, we'll have uh, anti-gravity someday. There's all kinds of stuff now that I'm beginning to think is just inevitable that in the past just sounded like witchcraft. Now, why is this so important? Because you have so many limiting beliefs. The average human does. I'm not, I did personally, I'm gonna talk about me for a minute. I had so many limiting beliefs that it was really hard for me to make the changes I needed to make to become the man I needed to be. And once I started seeing this, I started to say, maybe I can change. If these people can do this, why can't I meet a beautiful girl? If these people can do this, why can't I make more money? If these people can do this, why can't I build a career that makes me a million dollars a year? Why do I limit myself? Why can't I date a whole bunch of beautiful women if that's what I wanna do? What is the limit to me creating my reality? I mean, most of the things I wanna create don't even land in the realm of the impossible like these people. They just seemed impossible to me. But if these people are doing such crazy stuff and I see that the whole world is currently creating things that used to seem like witchcraft, from electronics to TVs to cameras to evacuated tube transport, the Elon Musk, uh, to Richard Branson learning to fly aircraft in space to, I mean, it just gets wilder and wilder. Then why can't I create the reality I wanna create? So many people think that they're, that they're stuck in this little world, that they have to live that world out. And I promise you, you don't. You can create your reality, but you have to start seeing the impossible happening to believe the impossible could happen for you. So I'm gonna uh, give you a homework assignment. Look these people up. Find other people like them. Find people I don't even know about that are doing the impossible. Not stuff that's not proven, but stuff that's really concretely proven. Like the stuff that people have been researching or people that are real. Not something that's, that some weird metaphysical newspaper wrote about that you can't really prove. Something concrete. Look for them. They're out there. There's a lot of them out there. Look in the past at things that used to seem impossible that are everyday and normal today and see how many of those you can find. Well, what about moving steps like escalators? See, think about how ridiculous that would have sounded a few hundred years ago. Oh yeah, we got these steps that just carry you up and you just stand on them and, and then they fold and come back around and carry you up again. I mean, it would have sounded impossible and stupid a few hundred years ago. Why would you have that? that will, I don't get it. How about elevators? You know, um, a few hundred years ago, an elevator, it still today it seems totally practical, but that was a little crazy then too. There's so many things that we take for granted today. Walk around, look for them. I used to walk around the streets and look for all the things that even a few hundred years ago seemed impossible. I'm gonna give you one more. If you think about the most successful people in the world, like, let's take the King of England, for example, in the 1800s, 1700s, 1600s, how did he travel? How did he get from one place to another? What was it like for him? Let's say the King of England wanted to go from England to France. But what do you have to do in the 1700s? He'd get a horse-drawn carriage, he'd have a whole team of people, he would be bouncing and, and he'd have no air conditioning or he'd have no heater. He would probably be dealing with bugs, flies. He'd probably be, have to go out into the woods to, to take a shit. What was his life like? It wasn't even close to as good as your life is today. You live better than the King of England did back then today because you have what we consider basic stuff that back then would have seemed crazy and miraculous, indoor plumbing, things like this. And if you look around in the world, it's pretty amazing what we've created. Can you imagine what it's gonna be like in another few hundred years? The impossible is possible and it's happening today and start to ask, where are the limits of my life? And can I take those limits off? Can I take those chains off? And really consider, what do you want your reality to look like? Sit down, write it out, picture it. Open up to the possibility. Look up people that already have that reality. Look up people that are succeeding at it. Look them up all the time. Look them up on YouTube, see if you can meet them, get around them, spend time with them and watch how your beliefs and your reality in this area start to change, how possibilities start to open for you. What I'm gonna ask you to do now 
is to comment below. Look up people that have the reality you want to create. And I want you to comment below and I want you to put those people or those situations or things that you found that seem impossible that are happening in the world, put them in the comments. Let other people uh, share them with other people, share them with us. I would love to see other people doing amazing stuff. And share your reality. What do you want to create? Put it down in the comments. Maybe it's a great lifestyle with women, but I bet there's a lot more. What else do you want to create? How far do you want it to go? If you took the limits off, what would it be? And uh, I would love to hear about it. And one more thing, if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button. It really helps us out, helps us to grow the channel, helps us to produce more videos like this for you. Also subscribe uh, and hit that notifications button so you see the videos in your feed when we put out new content. We're putting out more and more new content all the time and I don't want you to miss any of it. And with that said, remember, only the confident really live. Thank you.